So this is uh, fall 2018. Uh, week one course is uh, theory and control, EST 100. And uh, we're talking about chapter one, which is electrical safety. So what do you want to talk about? The relationship between our bodies and electricity. So we don't think of uh, our bodies as a network of electricity. But it is. Can you think of electrical parts in your body? What runs on electricity in your body? The nerve system? What else? Your brain. Your brain is mostly connection between neurons and it's all in small millivolts electrical signals. Does anybody do that a lot of sports? Okay. What happens if you walk too long without hydration? Huh? You get cramps, right? What's happening with cramps? Muscles losing a lot of electrolytes, and they stop functioning. What are electrolytes? We'll talk about this. So we got the nervous system, we got your muscles. Uh, have you seen somebody who goes into a heart attack and their heart stops and they go and they jump start him like a Chevrolet? What does that do? Yeah, why? Because it's, it's a network of electricity. So your muscle spasms because of small microelectrical current. It makes the muscle spasms. So your nervous system controls your muscle function through a small little electrical current. When you feel something, signal. So you have sensors in your body, sensors that send signals to your, your brain, and brain translates that into a reaction. So your body, whether you think of it or not, whether you believe it or not, is completely electrical. <coughs> Without electricity, you will not exist. You will not survive. That's why if you, again, if you dehydrate, when you have a heat stroke, what's happening? You depleted your body from all the electrolytes, and your body will cease to function anymore. There is no more connection anymore. And you will stop functioning. And actually, heat stroke is when you your brain temperature exceeds the operating limit. It's kind of like iPhone, they tell you it's too hot to operate and it shuts down. Same thing to protect your, your body. So we can talk a lot about the, the physical part of your body and the biological part of your body and how does it relate to electricity. And it's more than what we think. And is your body conductive or not conductive? First of all, what is conductive? That means it can pass through. Yeah, electricity can pass through it, right? So if you put the uh, uh, two voltages, plus and minus, to throw something. If it goes through, then it's conducted. If it doesn't, it's not conducted. In reality, everything is conducted at the right voltage. Remember this. <laughs> everything is conducted. Even uh, rubber? <clears throat> whatever. It's conducted at the right voltage. Even air is conducted at the right voltage. Can somebody take a shot in the dark and tell me what is the voltage that will conduct in the air? I mean, we've all been to magic shows and seen like spark flying and stuff. Quarter million? Huh? Quarter million? Less than that. We'll do it in the shop. Like a spark plug is conducting through a gap, air, right? Mm -hmm. And if you put two prongs and you run electricity in the, the, the spark will jump. Uh, anything above 10,000 volts, 10,000 volts will conduct through air. So the point being, you can conduct through anything even the toughest and thickest plastic or polymer, however you need the right voltage. So going back to the body, your body is conducting. And your body depends on a very sophisticated electrical system to function. Uh, so your body has voltage, your body has uh, resistance, and it has current. I'll bring a volt voltmeter next class and I'll show you what is the resistance of your finger. It all has resistance, right? Of course, if it's wet, it has more resistance. I mean, more conductivity. So, and we all went to science at some point, probably middle school, when you have a distilled water cup and two prongs stuck in it with a small light bulb, <laughs> and now no light comes up, but you keep adding some salt, and a little bit you see the, the light comes up, right? Because salt helps carry those electrons between the two prongs. So distilled water is not conductive for that amount of voltage. You need to add some kind of 
iron. So that's why when you buy Gatorade, I tell you it's good for you because why? It has electrolytes. So hydrates you. If you get distilled water, that's not good for you. It needs the salts. The body needs the salts. And when you sweat, you get salt out of your body. So you want to replenish that. Otherwise, your body will go into cramps and not be able to function well. Uh, the types of injury that could happen from mitigal current, we'll talk about that. It can be gruesome, so be careful. Uh, what would you do if you get exposed to electrical shock or if you see your body being zapped? You what is that? Try to knock them off. It's yeah, don't be part of the problem. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, grounding. What is grounding? What does it mean? A lot of these things we know because we hear about them a lot. But uh, we don't think that they function the way they do. But we'll talk about how it work. And we'll talk about some safety procedures. So we talked about the nervous system. We said it's a very intricate part of the body that sends small signals back and forth to every part of your body. Every muscle that I'm moving right now is basically a signal from the brain telling you to synchronize, twitching, and relaxing so you can move properly. And if you see, if you got a if you get zapped at some point, you'll see like you're not functioning very well. Your arm might, might not function very well. The movement will not be very smooth. It will be twitchy. So when uh, some people have when they have a twitch, there's an issue with, uh, with uh, connections for each muscles. Your body has over how many muscles? 450 or something. I'm not really sure, to be honest. <laughs> but it has a lot of muscles, and these muscles have to work in a synchronized way for you to move, to achieve a movement. Plasma. What is plasma? Not the TV. Well, that means the same thing. Plasma is the state where the gas get very ionized and very agitated that uh, it can push up the pictures. That's the plasma TV. So plasma is related to a state of being ionized. What is ionized? What's an ion? Let's think of another charge. How about that, right? Positive charge or negative charge. That's an ion. So we talk about plasma. Can somebody tell me what does what the blood consist of? And generally, three things. Cells. Yeah, what kind of cells? Two kinds of cells. Red cells. Red cells, white. white cells, and plasma. plasma. Plasma is the liquid that carries all these things together. It's kind of a fluid. Make sense? So and plasma is, has a lot of uh, component, and most of it is ions. Salty water. The salty water is what can conduct the electricity. Uh, and we said electrolytes are the salts in your, in your blood. When you sweat, you will extract some of that salt, which is good and bad at the same time. Sometimes you want, you want to keep the salt in your body in the right level. If you have too much salt, what will happen? You will have what's called uh, water retention, right? Mm -hmm. You hear about that when they tell you if you eat a lot of fast food, a lot of salt, you gain a lot of weight, it doesn't go away right away. Your body have too much salt and you get heavier, so you have to drink a lot of water to let your body drink that salt little by little. So, salt retention is an issue. So, when you sweat, you get, you get rid of salt. If you sweat too much and you don't replenish that salt, you might lose the salt balance in your body and you might start feeling dizzy and you might pass out because your body is not conducting correctly. Uh, conduction, we talked about conduction. Uh, material conducts, everything conducts, but uh, a good conductor will conduct at very small voltage. Uh, what is the best conductor? Usually metals are very good conductors. Uh, we'll talk about that also in very more detail. But you need to understand what's, uh, what is conduction, what is not material. Heart function, brain function, mainly is done by small electrical signals between the eye and the brain, the ear and the brain, the muscles in the brain, the heart. The heart is like a very tiny little muscle and it uh, has a part of the brain that regularly sends small signals to keep it functioning. You don't think about your heart, you don't feel it, but it's pumping 60 beats per minute, 24 seven, for an average for 80 years, pumping a lot of fluid through your body nonstop. There is no pump that does that. We did not manufacture a pump that will do that nonstop, convert to death with this synchronicity, with, with accuracy. 
If you even think about it, you run and it will go faster, you sleep, it will go slower, you get excited, it gets uh, faster, so it's very sophisticated pump, very reliable, uh, it's not very efficient, because the energy, but it's very reliable, it does last for 80 years. And that is done by small little wires connected to the brain to tell every muscle, muscle to contract and, and uh, extend at a certain rate. And sometimes some people have issues where they start having uh, palpitations. It goes too fast, or get, it goes out of sync. Yeah, it skips a beat. And uh, the solution is very easy. They put a small pacemaker. It's like the size of a, a battery, put it under your skin, and it just sends those little signals to your heart to make it contract and expand. So it's all electricity. Uh, we talk also about heat and ignition. That's also very important for electrical safety because uh, we all been through, I mean, we've all seen or heard about electrical fires. 90% of uh, residential fires are electrical. Hardly ever it's gas anymore, uh, but mostly electrical. And every material ignite at some temperature. So the thing about electricity is when you run current through a wire, what happens to it? It heats up. So after time, it will build more and more heat. Every wire has a certain rating for the amount of current you put through. If you exceed it, it will overheat. If it overheats, it's going to melt what? The covering, the sheet, the insulation. Once that starts burning, it's a petrochemical, it's carbon-based, it will ignite and cause fire. So, heat, once we produce enough heat, the material will ignite. Once ignited, a chain reaction will, ha will happen and it will catch on fire. And finally, electrical shock. So this question has been going on for ages now. Which one is more dangerous, voltage or amperage? Okay, anybody else? Why? Why? But what about voltage? So would you touch a 10,000 volt with low amperage? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll see that in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> see, the thing is, they both are fatal. And if you have different information, please let me know. <laughs> they both are fatal. Amperage are fatal because they can run through your body and can damage some nerves and can kill you. Voltage have enough jolt to stop something. Like if you, like when you zap somebody for, with a defibrillator, that's around 4,000 volts. So 4,000 volts, it's not a, there's no current, it's just a shock. But what you're doing actually is you're killing all the, all the, you're resetting. You're eliminating all the voltage in the, in the body and starting over again, hoping to start over again. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's, it's a last resort. Mm -hmm. So voltage does kill you. It can shock your body and things will stop. That's high voltage. Current can be small, can run through your body, and again, ruin your, ruin your, your, uh, your circulation, your uh, nervous system, and it can kill you as well. Voltage and, and current together can burn you. So you can get burns, you can get, get muscle damage, you can get nerve damage. Most of the problem when you get electrocuted, even by 110 volts, if it goes through the wrong path, if you feel, you should go to get checked right away. Because you might feel okay and keep walking, but you don't know, your heart might start to <coughs> You might feel a twitch, you might have damaged something. So you might want to go and get checked. So both, they can kill you, amperage and voltage. So both together is what cause fire, right? so what cause Yeah, fire. yeah. So don't tell, uh, if somebody tells you about 10,000, but it's only voltage, the kind of like kill you. No, touching 10,000 volts will really, Hurt. I mean, in the lab, we have uh, transformers at 10,000 volts, and touching those things is really, really bad. You all feel it for, you know, arm for at least a few hours. Tasers are only like 4,000. Yeah, yeah. And that, it's not out of current, no. not out of battery. So both are fatal. Be careful with both. And uh, treat electricity with a lot of respect. Because it's something we do not see, um, we do not understand, so we just don't pay attention to it. So. 
pay attention to it. Uh, again, what is a live circuit? What do you mean by a live circuit? It has, it's wired, but it has a current going through it. And how do we know? There is a voltage in a pin. It's the only way we know. This is your best friend. Even you park it and keep it sensing, if there's any, any voltage. Because it could be dead, you don't see if it's uh, anything, nothing's running, no lights, nothing, but it's still live. It is live. So you go with your voltmeter and you check. Is unplugged system safe? Mm. Who think it's safe? Okay, good. It's not safe. Why? You might have a charge. Have a, might have a battery, and there's also something else we'll learn about. It's called capacitor. Capacitor can start with 10,000 volts can stay for two days with this charge. And that charge can be very strong. Hmm. And in our field, probably you will see capacitors in any motor. It looks like a battery. In the outside, it's very lightweight. That's has a lot of voltage. And it is scary. And you'll see it a lot on compressor motor. So capacitors have a lot of charges. In the old tube TVs, I don't know if you guys know those anymore. <laughs> the big tube. Those have really huge capacitors and those are very dangerous and they always tell you, never open the TV case even if it's unplugged. I did it once because I just want to find out, but it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. So current and voltage effect, which is more harmful, they're both harmful depending on the amount that run through you. Shock or burn by higher voltage, it can burn in a very bad way. The temperature generated by the high voltage is high and it can cause really quick burn. Like it will fry things in an instant. Uh, sometimes by heat, and sometimes by just disintegrating the whole particles. Because if you think about it, we're made out of molecules, just like anything else. It's made of particles, it has electrons and protons and everything else. And if something comes with a huge amount of like electrons and rushes through you, it's gonna shatter you, small pieces. So it does burn you quickly, if you're not careful. Heart function beats and flutter, don't try to be brave. If you feel like you got zapped and you don't feel okay, you don't have to finish the job. Because uh, the more you wait, the more damage you can do. And there's a lot of stories about being shot in the field. Uh, you will go and you find a piece of equipment that is, seems uh, not functioning, but it's touching and it's tingly. So maybe a wire that shoot up by a mouse and it's touching the casing, <coughs> or you can touch the duct and it's a little bit, it feels uh, tingly. And again, you have to go always and check, make sure that everything is, is dead. Uh, a lot of, there's a few incidents in crawl spaces. You've been in a dark place and there are wires everywhere. Do not go in a very dark place without a flashlight. And in some jobs, you don't want to go alone as well. And avoid going to a job wearing short sleeves or expose legs because you're gonna be walking, you might sweat, and something might fall on you, and you are very conductive. So you're more exposed than going with a thick coverall, and you might have more resistance than something else. So be careful with that. Uh, a few years ago, somebody was uh, went to fix an AC in a, in a crawl space, and one of the wires was cut and chewed by a, a mouse. And while he was there, he didn't see the wire, and he just touched his back, and it doesn't take a few seconds, and he just like, passed out. His heart didn't function, and by the time they found him, he was already passed away. So think about that. Tell everybody where you're going, how long you're gonna be stay, staying there, and be careful. Like, don't underestimate how fast these things work. I want you to have the proper respect for electricity. We're gonna, do a, we're gonna be doing a lot of wiring here, 110, and we will reach up to 10,000 volts. I want you to be very careful and have respect for these uh, components. And after a while, you get comfortable, I feel it's okay, and you'll be touching stuff that are live, and uh, I want you to always understand that when it, when, once you plug it, it's live, and you should be careful. And uh, I'll talk also about uh, the path that the electricity takes through your body. That also makes a difference. So, this is very, very small current. This is very small current. So, 0 0.001 amp, you'll feel something. Like if you get uh, a small charger, probably it's a very small amperage, you'll feel something, not a lot. 
0.2 amps, 0.02 amps, you might get stuck. Hmm. What does that mean? Somebody got to help you out. Yeah. Hole or whatever. You get stuck. Like electricity. First of all, your muscle will cease. If you, if, you, if you hold something, you keep holding. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. You'll keep holding to the, the source of electricity because your muscles are seized. You cannot untangle them again. They are all seized to the maximum strength. So it's, uh, it's serious. It's very serious. So you get stuck. The muscles get lose function. You have an override over the signal coming from your brain by your by the outside current. So point one up, you have ventricular fibrillation, which means like your your, your heart is confused. So you get a lot of uh, overventilation and uh, hyperventilate, and uh, this can cause you to die. Point two hands, which is not allowed again. So you charge a light bulb. Severe burn and uh, respiratory paralysis. So you're, not, you're not going to be able to breathe. Again, just like how your heart is, uh, is beating, your lungs are the same thing. You think about breathing, you don't think about breathing. It's automated. Your chest cavity goes up to each sensor, and it goes down to each sensor, and it's synchronized with the amount of blood that's going through your body. So, yeah. This is not that much, so I want you to have proper respect for that. And uh, some people have this macho attitude that, yeah, I'm gonna touch you, I don't care. Well, uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And your safety and well-being is very important. And some people are really expert in the field. They have enough expertise to go and touch water by their hands. Not me. I want to be careful. And gloves are cheap and uh, why take a chance, okay? So let's be careful. I'm sure at some point you're gonna get zapped, but hopefully it will be 110, and it will give you a, a proper respect for the pain it caused. Uh, so we'll, I'll carry you through the procedure how to do proper wiring. Again, if you touch exposed wire, is that when you get zapped. And uh, if you have the proper wire nuts on it, and everything is covered correctly, she should be should be fine. Uh, how do you eliminate how do you eliminate fear? Knowledge. If you know where everything's supposed to go, if you follow the instructions, if you know what could happen, you'll have less fear. And a lot of people have uh, issues working with electricity. Nobody wants to work with electricity, right? And so it is very scary. And that's why electricians be yeah, to be a certified electrician, you get paid a lot of money because you have a lot of knowledge and you're putting your, your life at risk as well. But you have to know what you're doing. So the amount of current required to cause death, current flow through the body of 0.015 ampere or less. In comparison, 0.5 amperes current run to by 60 watt light bulb. So what does that mean? So this is the amount of it required to kill somebody. But a 60 watt light bulb, which is the average house of light bulb, throws half an amp. That's a lot. Mm. So if you stick your finger in there, you're done. So it's not that much to kill a human being. So I will talk about what is amp mean and watts. These are all units, but we, I will help you understand what this mean. How do you draw that amp? You might stick your finger in a light, in a light bulb socket and you'll be okay based on how you conduct and how this current goes through your body. Again, what are the vital organs in your body that keeps you alive? Heart? Brain. Brain. So if you get something go through your, your head, that's not good. And if you get if you touch a light bulb with your right finger and you're touching the conductor material with your left and it goes through your heart, no good. If you're lucky, you can touch it with your right finger and right foot. It goes through your body, but does not pass your heart. You might survive, but not be bad. But the worst thing you can do is touch things with two hands and have it go through your chest. And that's a bad example. So electrical shock, also being zapped. It's uh, 
It's, it has a very tingly feeling. It feels like uh, distinguished. It comes in waves, and it might last for a while. And you might cause damage to small little nerve in your finger. If you think about it again, if you touch any side of your skin, you feel something, right? Which means there's a network, small, intricate network <coughs> of nerve around your skin, your entire skin. Not only the skin, the muscles, the bones. There's a very intricate uh, nervous system. And if this nervous system get damaged, you might lose feeling, it might feel like bird, it might feel tingly. So uh, even a small bird can cause some damage. You might be thrown off the ladder. Very likely you'll be on a ladder and you touch something and uh, the, the jolt might make your body spasm and you push back and jump. That might kill your finger, it usually does. So be very careful. So would it be wise to use aluminum ladder? Mm. No, you don't want to use aluminum ladder, you don't wood or fiberglass ladder. So be careful with that. Mm. You go to somebody's house and of course they're gonna have the aluminum ladder because it's light and cheap. It's not cheap, but it's light. So they keep it there, store it, and you can fold it. Don't use that. Is yeah. there, if you do use that, is it the proper footwear or something you can use? It? Yeah, but still, it's not going to be. Yeah. yeah, it's better than nothing, but it's not yeah. uh, going to be conductive. Uh, you, you put non conductive ladder or feet. Uh, so, what is a non conductive material? Example, wood. Some kind of fabrics are non conductive. What about wet fabric? Is that conductive? Wet fabric? Yeah. 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 Once it gets wet, it's conductive. So fabric is non conductive as fibers, but once it's, once it's wet, it's good conductive. Plastic? Conductive or not? It's not conductive. Rubber? No, not conductive. To a limit again, everything is conductive. I'll show you something. This is a cable for a power line. And this is a of it. It's what conduct the power to probably like a few houses. Look at the insulation in the middle. It's all wax, layers, sheathing, protection. I'll pass it through. So this is how much you need to be able to touch the wire when it's live and maybe you'll be, uh, you might be okay. The, the aerial wires that you see in the street, they're still conducting, but they, is, uh, they don't have the same way to be touching them. And they need to be lightweight. This is very heavy. This cannot be aerial. This will fall. Nothing will support This is underground. So this is how, good, how much you you need to run the voltage to this wire. So the National Electric Company here, they have all the guidelines for uh, circuit flushing. I have a link for it. <coughs> they, they have all the codes in terms of wires and how much protection do you need, how much insulation should be there, and uh, what kind of gloves. And you'll see this uh, these layers on any any uh, electrical tape you buy, or if you buy any uh, electrical gloves, you'll see those letters on it. And uh, also you see UL with some tapes, that means that it's certified to be running with uh, You can go and find all the, the standards and codes. Keep that link. I don't think you need a lot of it, but it's good to, to have as a reference for the NFPA or uh, national codes. Do you know if they have uh, like an app or something? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But a lot of these things are proprietary. They want to make money out of it. So even the codes, you have to pay for it. They want to be a member. 
So when you, you need to. So electrical drum. Let's talk about grounding. What do you think? We, need, we see about grounding a lot, right? We talk about it, ground, ground, but nobody knows what it's right. What does it do? <coughs> so, actual ground, earth, is conductive. We said everything is conductive, right? Ground is conductive. Uh, what we do is we channel all our wiring, all our casing, to go into the ground to provide an easier path for it to go. Let's think of a drain. Like we have a house with a lot of faucets, a lot of dappers. You always are gonna have a drain, which is a big hole, goes into the ground, based in depth. Same thing with the with electricity. So when you see this symbol is always there for many uh, schematics, which means actually like ground. And it's literally ground. They have a big brass bar that they bury into the ground, which was supposed to be the easiest path for the current to go through. In your car, does anybody do any wiring in their car? Yeah. yeah. So there's a ground. What is, what is your ground usually? The body. Uh, the, body. The, the body. In comparison, the body is the car is the biggest part of it that can make a distance. Or maybe the interior depends on the body. Yeah. So that's going to be your ground. For us in a house, our ground is earth. So in the past, they used to put the ground with what? For putting actual ground, plumbing system, mm. because the plumbing is in the in the ground, coming from the ground, but that's not the code anymore. They want you to have separate ground that goes inside. And I think I have a picture of it here. So when you have ground, usually there's a third terminal here. This terminal does not go to anywhere. It's connected to the case. If you open the case, any receptacle, you'll see a green wire connected to the receptacle. What is that mean? What is that for? Grounding the case. Yeah, why? Why the case? The wire, the wire that comes in should also have a, the ground wire on it that connected to that bar so yeah. near your box. So the case is, in case one of those wires get loose, it touches the case. They don't want to go through the case and affect the other wire. It wants to go to the ground. So whatever thing gets loose, has a channel to go through and not stay, not electrify the, the case. And uh, that's why we have this third connection here. So this is a, a foolproof path for all nestled or chewed up parts. Yeah, question. Yeah, that's the problem. That's what people do. You're not supposed to break these. These are for a reason. I'm gonna talk about that now. Sometimes I don't have a third one, so I just... I know, that's really sad. <laughs> It's very unsafe for you and the equipment. And uh, that's not always do feel bad, I used to do that too. It's annoying, I'm gonna go buy a freaking another uh, uh, <laughs> station cord now, and it's really easy to break, to be honest. <laughs> Get it done with it. For first wall appliances, it's not a big deal, but if it's there, it's there for a reason. It's for your safety. In case uh, something like that, especially in moving equipment and computers, you want that. Otherwise, you might have a charge going on somewhere. <coughs> no, you don't want that one. No. no. No, no, no. I'm saying you would want that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what I'm saying. Or also power equipment. Oh, we have time? Okay. Sorry. Can pause.